Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the all-new Apple iPad Air. So this is the fifth generation of Apple's full-size 9.7-inch iPads, replacing the fourth generation, which has been discontinued. We still have the iPad Mini lineup, which will be adding a Retina version at the end of this month. We also have the iPad 2 still in the lineup, which is $100 cheaper than this model. So this starts off at $499, gets its name because it's now much thinner and lighter than before. It's 20% lighter, so it's a pound instead of 1.4 pounds. It's also 20% thinner, so 7.5 mil thin. It's also twice as powerful, both in graphics performance and CPU performance, so a huge gain here. Now, amazingly, this still retains the 10-hour battery life, even though they've shrunken down the battery considerably to make it lighter and thinner. Now, in other minor changes, this also gets a new FaceTime camera with backside illumination, so you get a better FaceTime camera, just like on the new iPhone. Now you have four storage capacities to pick from, 16, 32, 64, or 128 gigs, and you just add $100 for each capacity increase. So you can get this all the way up to $800. Now if you want cellular connectivity for data, uh, you just have to add $130. That also gives you a GPS antenna. So you can get this iPad all the way up to $930, and that's the version I have here. This is the AT&T LTE version with 128 gigs. Uh, this also works on Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile in the U.S., so you can get versions for those as well. And I have the base configuration here, which is the 16 gig Wi-Fi model. So we're going to take a look at both of these in this video. I like the iPhone 5S. This also has the A7 processor, but this one is clocked to 1.4 gigahertz versus 1.3 on the iPhone. This also has one gig of RAM, which is unchanged from last year. Now we also get a few other improvements, including MIMO, dual MIMO Wi-Fi antennas, we also get some improved cameras, including a new 5 megapixel eyesight camera with better optics. Uh, we also have a new backside illuminated FaceTime camera, again, very similar to the updated cameras on the iPhone 5S, as well as the iPhone 5C. All right, so let's go ahead and start unboxing first with the Space Gray 16 gig Wi-Fi iPad Air. All right, as you can see on the side, you have iPad Air, you have your Apple logo, iPad Air, Apple logo, as well as your specs and your serial number information, so you can see what's included in the box as well. Let's go ahead and lift the lid here. All right, there is our iPad Air. You can see the internal of that box. You should have a little tab down here to lift up. There you go. Wow, it's very lightweight. That's the first thing that I noticed compared to the iPad 4. This is much lighter, very thin, very nice. Let's set that aside for just a minute while we take a look at what we get inside the box. Now we have our 12 watt power supply for charging our iPad. You can see we have our folding prongs. So let's go ahead and open this up, take a look. You can see our folding prongs and this is removable so you can add your own wall adapter if you're traveling or if you want an extension cable you can do that as well. Pretty much unchanged from the other iPads. Uh, we also have our literature packet. So inside we'll find iPad Air. Some instructions on what each button does. So you can see uh, lightning connector, home button, volume button, side switch, sleep wake button. We also have iPad info which is regulatory information and of course Apple stickers. Now here we find our lightning to USB charging cable, which we're all pretty familiar with. Now let's get to our Space Gray iPad Air. So let's go ahead and peel open this envelope. Slides right out. I really like Space Gray. I think it's one of my favorite colors right now. So you can see on the bottom we have stereo speakers, which is new to the iPad, full-size iPad lineup. We're used to this with the iPad mini. Basically, this redesign pretty much mimics the iPad mini. So on the back we have our Apple logo, which is a separate component this time. It's not actually polished into the raw aluminum like it was on the older iPad mini. On the back we have our 5 megapixel eyesight camera. On the side we have our metal volume up and down button, as well as our physical switch here which can act as either a mute switch or orientation lock depending on how you have that configured. We have our sleep wake switch and if you look at the edges you see that mirrored chamfered edge very nice. It's nice to see that finally make it to the full size iPad. It looks particularly nice on such a large device. You have your home button here which does not have touch ID. Unfortunately it did not make it to the iPad this time. Now at the top we'll find a set of dual microphones which helps with audio pickup. We also have our headphone jack as you can see, it's got a nice rounded edge to it. Now, if you look at the front, you'll find your new and improved FaceTime camera. And next to that is an ambient light sensor, which is kind of hidden with the black bezel. You can see this more on the white version. So we're going to take a look at that. All right, so that is the Space Gray iPad Air. So let's go ahead and get to the white version, and then we can start comparing them. 
Now, as I said, this is the fully spec version, has LTE with 128 gigs of storage. So we have a slight design change here, which we're gonna take a look at uh, to accommodate the wireless antennas that are needed for LTE. We also have that GPS antenna, so it needs some uh, radio transparency in order for it to work. All right, so let's just lift the lid here. And there is our iPad Air in white. You can see that white bezel, which if you look at the fifth or fourth generation, you can see just how much more compact it is now. All right, let's just lift this out of here. So you can see the raw aluminum, which looks pretty familiar if you're used to the original iPads. But of course, there are a few things that differentiate the cellular version, including this nano SIM tray, as well as this radio transparent plastic window at the top. Now, because I have the white version here, this is white. If you had the space gray with black, this would be black to match. Now, I'm not going to unbox the accessories again, but we should see one element here that you don't get with the Wi-Fi version, and that is a SIM ejection tool, of course, for ejecting that SIM tray. All right, so once again, let's take our really thin and lightweight iPad Air, unpack the envelope, slide it right out, and there we go. You can see it's almost palmable, so you can actually hold it with one hand. Maybe not comfortably, but at least it's more comfortable this time than it was with the fourth generation with the wide bezel. So let's go ahead and take a look around again. So we have our home button. We have our new FaceTime camera. And this time you can see that uh, ambient light sensor right next to it. Up top, you'll see your headphone jack, which is white to correspond with the white trim up here as well as the white bezel. So you still have our dual microphones, this time built into the plastic versus milled into the metal. Up top, you have your sleep wake button as well as your eyesight camera, again, five megapixels. On the right side, we'll find more color-keyed metal buttons, including our volume, dedicated volume controls, as well as our physical switch here for muting or orientation lock. Now, down here, you'll see your SIM tray, so you can inject it using that SIM tool. Now, once again, you have that mirrored bezel along the edge, or this mirrored chamfer. Again, really nice, especially with such a large device. It really uh, gleams, kind of a nice effect here. You can see we have a more rounded bezel this time, or rounded edge, so it doesn't really dig into your hand when you're handling it. And, of course, we have our stereo speakers here flanking our lightning connector. Now along the back, we have our polished Apple logo, which does a nice job picking up the mirrored effect of the polished chamfered edge. All right, so there is your space gray Wi-Fi iPad versus your silver LTE iPad. So the silver, as you can see, has a lighter Apple logo. It's more of a clearer, mirrored finish versus a smokier finish on the space gray model. That extends to the bezel, the chamfered edge here. So if you look at that chamfered edge, you can see that there is a smokier look to it on the space gray version versus the white version. Uh, so you can see it's a little more mirrored, but the effect is pretty subtle with the space gray iPad. It's not an overwhelming dark color. It does a nice job complementing the black bezel of the black iPad. Now, as you can see, the black version does a nice job sort of hiding the barrier between the bezel and the screen. It also hides the cutouts for the camera as well as the ambient light sensor, so it's a little more seamless looking. But I actually really like the white version just because I think looking at a display with a white surround is a little easier on the eyes. Now, Apple pays a lot of attention to the details here, so you can see we have our metal buttons, which are color keyed to the body of the iPad. You also see that the camera ring is also color matched to the body. Now even the headphone jack is black on the space gray version versus white on the silver version. If you look really closely here on the white version, you can see the ambient light sensor, which kind of has a perforation through the white bezel. On the black version, it's much harder to see. Now if you look at the lightning connectors, you can see even the inserts are color matched, black on the space gray, white on the uh, white version. You can also see that the grills behind the speakers are also color matched. You can see they're darker here versus that silver color on the white version. Now, on the cellular version, you get that SIM tray, which is, of course, missing on the Wi-Fi version. All right, so let's go ahead and boot these up for the first time. So I'm just going to tap and hold the sleep-wake button up top. As you can see, we also get different boot screen wallpapers to match the color of the iPad. So we have a gray-white color for the white iPad, black for the black iPad. All right, so let's go ahead and set these up. We're going to do English. We're going to do the United States. Uh, we're going to select my network here, so we're going to go to my wireless network. All right, so both my iPads are activated, and I can go ahead and enable my location services. So I'm going to set this up as a new iPad, but I could restore this from a backup. Let me go to set this up as a new iPad and sign in with my Apple ID. Now, if you're like me and use two different accounts for both your iTunes content as well as iCloud, you can go ahead and select this option right here and log in separately. The next step is to agree to terms and conditions. All right, now it's asking me if I want to use iCloud, and yes, I do. And I want to use Find My iPad. 
Now my next step is to confirm my iMessage and FaceTime accounts, which I don't want to share, so we're going to click next on those as well. All right, so we now have the option to create a passcode, but I'm going to skip that, so I'm going to go to do not add passcode and click continue. Yes, I do want to use Siri, and we're going to automatically send diagnostic information to Apple, and we're going to register with Apple, yes, and click next, and welcome to the iPad, so let's get started. So there you go. As you can see, it's the default iOS 7 wallpaper. They haven't picked a different wallpaper to match the color of the bezel. Now, if you're new to the iPad, there are a few basics to be familiar with. So we have our drop-down shape. So here you have notifications, which have this sort of tabbed viewer. They're sort of categorized here. I don't have any notifications to show you right now, but you get the idea here. So you have the today view, which gives you the dates, gives you the weather conditions, your calendar events, as well as what's coming up, and a few other things, depending on how you have this configured. You also have all your notifications, so all your text messages, your Facebook updates, that sort of thing would appear here. You also have everything that you've missed. So these are basically basically an aggregation of all your notifications in one chronological view. Now we also have our control center here which gives you quick access to uh, useful settings such as airplane mode, your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb so if you want to quiet your iPad so it doesn't ring in the middle of the night you can do that. You also have rotation lock here as well. You also have your screen brightness which is very handy to have on quick access and you have your volume controls here so if you don't want to use the physical buttons you could use that. You also have your media controls, you have your airplay devices so you can control your airplay devices on your Wi-Fi network. As you can see it all automatically detects my existing uh, AirPlay devices, and you can quickly launch your uh, alarm or clock app. Now we also have multi-touch gesturing, so if you swipe up with four fingers, you get to our launcher. This has all of our apps that have been frozen in the background, so you can quickly re-access them if you've gone somewhere else. So if you want to get to back to Safari here, let's go ahead and tap that. And same story here, swipe up to get to it. Sometimes you have to do it in the middle of the screen to get to it. There you go. Let's do it again. And of course you can also close these by swiping up on them. Now alternatively you can also double tap on the home button to get to them and you could also swipe between them using that four finger gesture so you can swipe between apps just like that. And of course you can also search the iPad just by swiping down somewhere on the home screen and invokes the uh, sort of global search to search your iPad for both your contacts, email, photos, music, videos, that sort of thing. Now one of the really cool things with iOS 7 on the iPad is the parallax effect. So it basically creates the illusion that the icons and elements of the user interface are floating above the wallpaper. So you can see that as you pitch the device side to side, uh, you can see it's actually really smooth, especially with the A7 processor in here. Now in terms of the camera app, there really isn't anything new here. This is pretty much carried over. So we have our square mode, we have our photo mode, and we have our video mode. So we don't have any of those features like slow-mo mode from the iPhone 5S. Again, we're using only a 5 megapixel camera. So we have better optics with this camera, but it's pretty much the same sensor. Uh, you can see you can tap anywhere on the scene to focus. You can tap and hold to lock the exposure and the focus, and you get a little indicator up here. Tap anywhere on the scene to get rid of it. Uh, and that works in both photo and video mode. We also have HDR, which you can enable here. And you can also switch between the cameras. So if you want to take a photo, just tap the show to release. And if you want to take several photos, just tap and hold it. It's not, it doesn't have that burst mode like you get with the iPhone 5S, but it will continue to take photos for you. In video mode, you can record, but you cannot snap photos like you can with the iPhone. All right, so let's take a look at the size difference between the iPad 4th generation and the iPad Air. So you can see that's a big story here. So we have a much thinner bezel, which makes this a lot more one-handable. So you can see you can grip it with one hand versus the iPad 4, which is quite a bit wider here. And the other benefit here is that uh, we have less bezel along the side. So when you're typing in portrait orientation, there is, uh, to me, it's a lot more comfortable. It's a more comfortable grip here. You don't have to reach your thumb across as much. Uh, with this, it's a lot closer, so your thumbs are a little more comfortably positioned. When you place it on top of each other, you can see just how much they've cut off along the edges. So we zoom in here, you can see the difference here. So pretty substantial, and again, just like the iPad Mini, they actually have software built into this version of the iPad, which ignores the presence of your thumb. So as you can see, I can grip the edge of the iPad with my thumb and palm partially touching the screen, but it doesn't register it as an intentional touch of the screen. It ignores it, and I can continue scrolling around instead of pinching in and out. Now once again, the retina display is pin sharp, so even the smallest text is crisp and clear. The display is also very bright and vivid with excellent color accuracy. It's definitely one of the better displays on the tablet I've used.
Now, unlike the iPhone, the iPad does not have a laminated display, so the LCD display isn't laminated to the glass, probably because when you press harder on the glass of something this large, it would sort of disrupt the LCD. Uh, so in this case, it's still the same story here, so you can still see there's a little gap between the glass and the LCD display. It doesn't look like they shrank that down at all. Now, to my eyes, it looks like the iPad Air's home button is slightly smaller than the one on the iPad 4th generation. Now if we compare the design side by side, you can see just how much thinner it is compared to the fourth generation. And as you can see, we now have stereo speakers versus the single speaker on the back of the iPad fourth generation. Uh, you can see our lightning connector. On the right side, you'll see we have our SIM tray relocated now from the left hand upper side to the lower hand right hand side on the iPad Air. On the back, you see we have a plastic logo plastic Apple logo versus the metal logo back here. iPad branding is the same so they haven't changed the font like they did with the iPhone. Up top you can see the plastic window now matches the white on the front. It didn't before, it was always black. Uh, you can see we now have metal buttons versus the plastic buttons on the iPad 4th gen. Same on the side. You can also see we now have dedicated controls for volume instead of the volume rocker. Same with the switch here. You can see it's now uh, metal instead of plastic. The camera module is also a little different here, so you see that little chrome or metal ring versus this aluminum ring. If you look along the side, you can see we now have a much more rounded edge versus this sort of wedge-shaped sharper edge, which means it's a little uncomfortable to handle, especially with the weight of the fourth generation iPad. And we also gain that polished chamfered edge versus this sort of rounded edge, which has this sort of plastic bezel around the glass, as you can see, kind of lifts up versus that flush design here on the iPad Air. And we also gain those dual microphones with the iPad Air versus the single on the iPad fourth gen. Now, as Apple indicated, the A7 processor doubles the performance of the iPad 4th generation. And if we look at the synthetic benchmark scores, in this case Geekbench 3, that confirms it. So we have doubled our single core score from the iPad 4th generation and double, almost double, the performance on the multi-core score. Now, this bests the iPhone 5S, which scores about 1386 and 2485 on the same test. This is running at 1.3 gigahertz versus 1.4 here. That's thanks to the larger battery and more space for cooling. Now, Apple also claims that the iPad Air's graphics processor doubles the performance of the iPad 4th generation. Now, if we look at our synthetic score, specifically 3D Mark, the Ice Storm Unlimited test, we scored about 10,866 on the iPad 4 versus 14,894 on the iPad Air. So not, at least in the synthetic score, we don't really see that here, but it's certainly an improvement. So in conclusion, I am really impressed by the new iPad Air. It's much, much thinner. I mean, it's not just slightly thinner or moderately thinner. It's much thinner. It is much lighter, which makes a huge impact on the usability of this tablet, both in terms of how much bulk it takes up in your hands, as well as how much weight you're carrying around over an extended period of time. Certainly not as light as the iPad Mini, but this makes the iPad Air a lot more usable. You can see I can fit it in one hand, I can toss it around very comfortably, I can hold it in landscape orientation, and everything works really smoothly and quickly on here. They've been able to double the performance, shrink down the battery significantly without reducing battery life. We have this beautiful new thin design with that uh, polished chamfered edge, and I'm definitely impressed by what they've done here. Now, if you have the iPad 4th generation, there really isn't a compelling reason to upgrade. You still have the same beautiful display. You still have an excellent performing device with excellent battery life. It's just heavier and bulkier than uh, the iPad Air. Uh, but the iPad Air, for me, the form factor is really important. This, I tended not to use just because I found it too big to carry around. So it ended up staying home, and I'd prefer carrying around my iPad Mini. So for me, this makes the iPad or the full-size iPad a lot more usable and a lot more likely to leave the house. All right, guys, so that's going to do for me in this video. But before I leave, I'd love to know which color do you prefer, space gray with black or silver with white. I could go either way. I really like both of them, so it's kind of a toss-up, but I tend to prefer the white, but I'd love to know what you guys think. So let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you again in the next video. What's going on, guys? Mike here at the Detroit Borg, testing out the new FaceTime camera on the iPad Air. This has been improved with backside illumination, so you should see better performance, but this does record video at 720p at 30 frames per second. So this gives you an idea of the audio recording quality as well as video. And that's my dog crying right there. <laughs> and speaking of my dog, here is a test of the iSight camera. Again, this is five megapixels. Uh, it does not have a lot of remarkable features here. Pretty much records, has a stabilization, electronic stabilization, but uh, you have tap to focus. You can zoom in and out with a pinch on the screen. Uh, and the quality certainly isn't up to iPhone standard, but it gets the job done for a tablet.
Now let's go ahead and take a look to see how the EyeSight camera performs outdoors. I should warn you, it's quite windy out today.